So what I've got today is the culmination of three years of um, blood, sweat, and tears, kind of redefining a category uh, within the avalanche safety sector of, uh, of the world. BD is, a, is fully committed to avalanche safety. This product represents not only three years of work on the packs, but also on the new shovels and probes and saw, and really the category as a whole, redefining um, BD's commitment to backcountry safety and also backcountry touring with the new carbon skis, so check those out if you get a chance as well. Uh, Jet Force is, is really a revolution in airbag technology. Um, what became really obvious was that the, the crucial issues of airbags weren't in the deployment and weren't in the fact that they you know, reduced your burial and, and ultimately helped save your life. They were in all the moments leading up to that moment when you pull the trigger and all the moments after. So what we really wanted to focus on was making this holistic product and look at it from the, from the moment you got out of the car to the moment that you got home, back home safely. And, uh, and really, the biggest things that we wanted to uh, refine were the, the single deployment, so the only, you know, the biggest problem, the biggest problem was uh, single deployment, the travel barriers, so the inability to fly anywhere internationally without any issues, um, the refill and replace challenges, of course, like anybody that's traveled with one anywhere is, uh, has been focused on that or had, has been dealt with that. So I wanted to focus on those things first. And what we realized was that all of those problems really stemmed from having a compressed gas cylinder in your pack. Um, and so we started off in the very beginning looking at new options for uh, replacing that cylinder. And we started with mechanical springs, we started with chemical reactions, um, you know, kind of a Mentos and Pepsi uh, alternative to airbag safety. Um, we, the mechanical springs thing was one of the sketchiest prototypes I've ever been a part of. Uh, we did pyrotechnics as well. Pete is a pyrotechnics um, redneck, really. Um, and so where we netted out was really the oldest, simplest method for moving air from the, uh, from the atmosphere, which is an unlimited source, to the, uh, into a bag, into the airbag itself. And so it was really just a fan. And we were able to prototype and we were able to test a lot of different methods for, uh, uh, for moving that air quickly through the fan. And the beauty of moving to an electronic system like Jet Force is really all the benefits that you get. Um, and the first half of those benefits are all about ease of use. So we're using a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Right. And, they, uh, and so you can plug it in at the end of the day or at the end of the week or at the end of you know, your ski vacation and charge it back up, which is really, you know, that's awesome. Um, then also we have uh, the travel friendly, you know, you can go anywhere in the world and it basically travels just like a, um, just like a computer laptop battery would. And then we have system self-diagnostics. So if you can hear this, when I turn the system on, it'll actually run backwards at 100%. And what that's doing is it's just checking to make 100% sure that everything is accurate and working well and ready to go. And when it is, I get that flashing green light, it pulses on and off for the entire day that I'm out there, so I know, without a doubt, the system's ready to protect my life. Um, so that's good. And then, the nice thing is, it's really simple, it's really easy to understand. At any point I can, in the day, I can check the battery level. It uses very, very little amount of the battery during the day. so that won't really change. And then, like any of the systems out there, it's really easy to deploy. That first nine seconds is a mandatory sec it's mandatory fill, so it runs that section no matter what you do. You pull that through. For this first full minute, it runs 100% to 50% and 100% to 50%. And what it's doing is it's basically keeping the bag as full as possible, but it's also recovering from any punctures or tears that you might get on during the slide path. So it's keeping this 200 liters of air in there, which helps keep you to the top. Even if you get, at this point, we can recover from about a six inch slip. And it's doing that for that first full minute, um, which is basically, if the slide lasts longer than a minute, you're probably not gonna last no matter what's on your back. So we focus on that first full minute as the active burial phase. And then at the one minute mark, 
we go into long pauses between the two, between the two inflations. Now you'll notice that the bag is quite a bit larger than other ones. When you're when you're working with an unlimited air supply, there's no reason to go smaller. There's no fixed relationship between the cylinder size and the bag size. So inverse segregation works on being the largest piece, you know, the largest nut in that can. So the bigger your bag, potentially the better performance. Now there's no proof for that, but it's for sure not going to be a downside. Also, if you do get a puncture or tear, you're going to spend more time above that sort of magic volume of 150 liters. Um, this one, by the way, is 200 liters, which is, is not safe. <laughs> um, we do have a ripstop fabric, because we're not trying to seal all the air in. We can reduce the coating on the inside of the fabric. We can actually give it a little bit of stretch. And, uh, and because of that, we can use a lighter weight fabric and still get the same tear resistance as an ABS bag, which is kind of the high bar right now. Um, and then the, the next phase, so that minutes two and three um, are the... No? Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Minutes two and three are the... Um, volume maintenance. So we're just trying to keep that 200 liters until the three minute mark and then we're going to shut it down. And really that's the CE spec but it's also keeping you from getting caught by a secondary uh, slide or anything like that if you're in a rescue situation. At any moment I could either turn this off by holding the button down on the bottom or I could actually even redeploy it. If it's in, the, if it's in that long gap phase and a secondary slide came down or, or something else happened and I wanted to go right back to that full inflation, I could pull that trigger and it would go right back through the entire cycle again, uh, which is great. We're about to hit that. We're about to hit that three minute mark uh, and it's going to suck all the air back out. So at three minutes, the slide is done, whatever's happened has happened. And if you're fully buried, you just got the potential, you know, potential for a 200 liter air pocket right behind your head. Now that comes from a background of doing, you know, we've been doing Avalon packs for the last eight years, 10 years. And Avalon is one of those things that protects you at any point on your day, whether you're skinning up or whether you're on the top of something. Every airbag out in the market right now will only offer you protection if you're actually caught in that churning phase, right? You have to be churned to the top for inverse segregation to get to work. Um, this one at least gives you the opportunity for a large air pocket or, or improved odds for self-extraction or whatever, you know. Having that thing suck away and, uh, and be easier to repack is the, is at least the benefit. So we wanted to make sure that this thing was really user friendly. It's, you know, after you pull the trigger, one, we want to make sure that you're, that it's easy to practice. We talk about practicing with every other piece of equipment for backcountry safety. And uh, the challenge is up until this point, there's been barriers to practice, whether it's been cost or, or you know, time served, hunting around for a, for a paintball shop to fill up your airbag with, um, your, your cylinder. So at this point, we want you to have muscle memory. If anything goes, if anything, uh, if you get caught in a little slough, we want to make sure that you pull that trigger first without thinking about it, and then ski out. So by having it be really easy to repack, and by having it be rechargeable and having multiple, uh, multiple inflations over the course of the day, you can pull that trigger, you know, Regardless, and there's no there's no compromise. There's no downside. You'll still be protected for the rest of the day. Now, that's all the more reason to make sure that it's locked away when you're in the tram, so your buddy doesn't grab it and uh, and yank it uh, for you. So we also wanted to take away any user error. So we're just we, we made this thing super safe to pack it back up. You can notice I'm just cramming this thing in. I'm actually perched on a step ladder and repacking this thing. Um, with one hand, basically. We wanted to take away the potential for user error in having a, a specially folded uh, airbag. And then the last little component here is a mechanical trigger mechanism. So as opposed to having Velcro and breakaway zippers and things like that, we opted for a mechanical system that rides on a cable. And when you pull that trigger, 
the ferrules move up and out of the way and release these clips. So the advantage there is one, it works the same the 30th time you pull it as it did the first time you pulled it. Um, and there's no, none of the degradation that you get with Velcro. And it's also not subject to icing and, and uh, all the variations that you get with, with Velcro as well. And then we're also run, we're running a coil zipper instead of a two zipper. And that's just added security. It's stronger, they last longer. So I'll just clip this thing back in. Tuck it away. And I'm good to go. The airbag itself is still, is still armed. So at any point, I could just pull the trigger again and be ready to go. Or if I wanted to turn it off, I would hold the button down until the red flashing light went solid. It would give me, it would give me three beeps to let me know audibly and visibly that that system just got shut down. And I could either leave it here or I could stow it away in its little zippered pocket and it's deactivated, you know, doubly basically. So Jet Force system relies completely on ambient air pulling it in. So there's three zones where the air comes through. Down here in the lower half, the entire back panel is air uh, intake. And then as the bag itself breaks away, that the whole pocket lining is also meshed too to pull in air for a total of three square feet of air intake. Um, so multiple deployments, um, automatic deflation, system self-diagnostics, Travel-friendly lithium-ion battery, it's rechargeable, and uh, this yeah. So obviously, on on any bad day, the Jet Force system is what's going to you know potentially save your life or your buddy's life. But what really matters on a good day, and 90% of the time, is what the pack is designed for. And when we started working with the pros, and we started working with people that have been carrying these things for you know 10 plus years. To a T, every single one of them complained about the pack design. And whether it was the, the carry, the comfort system, or the way that the weight held, or the, the ski performance of the pack. So we put a lot of emphasis into, you know, we, we adapted our uh, reactive suspension system to carry the weight balanced across your shoulders and across your hips. Um, we have torso sizing so that the pack fits you well. We have uh, the the pack itself, all the weight is down in the lower lumbar area, so you have large back to panel access to a large compartment on the inside. Now this is the 11 liter, so uh, it's basically the same volume as our Bandit, but we have a 28 and a 40 as well. And then you can see in the bottom here all of the weight of the battery, um, the recharge plug, and the fan housing which sits in the side. It's down low and it sits right up against your lumbar, so it's nice and comfortable and, and the ski performance is uh, unmatched. Obviously, there's lots of cool features, but we wanted to tuck them away and have a nice clean exterior. So, first and foremost is access to that front shovel uh, Abbey Tools pocket and a little organizer here. Even if you have uh, the airbag deployed, you can still get access to your shovel pocket. If you want to carry skis diagonally, this strap actually runs underneath the airbag, attaches to the frame for a nice secure fit. And you have the uh, adjustable webbing loop down below. And then helmet carry also comes out of the little magical pocket at the bottom. And you can either loop it up across the front here with the, for your helmet carry, or if you are diagonally carrying skis, you can take this down below and carry your helmet down there as well. So a nice clean exterior kind of downplays the fact that this thing has all the critical core features that um, you know that a backcountry skier, off-piste skier needs.